Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeff Malinoff, and with me, as always, is Mark Souza. We are caught fresh off of the Super Bowl 53 matchup between the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams, as we have the New England Patriots regaining the Super Bowl championship for a record sixth time. And for Brady, it's his sixth Super Bowl, the most of any player in NFL history, which makes him... Uh, uh, no doubt about it, considered one of the greatest of all time. And, well, that's an argument for everybody else, but for me, that's no, that's undoubtedly. But regardless, he is now a six-time Super Bowl champion in arguably the worst Super Bowl game in NFL history because of the fact it ended 13-3, only one total touchdown. Mark, what were your thoughts on the Super Bowl? It was trash boring. Both. Okay. It was absolutely boring. There was just no excitement. You just were waiting and waiting. It was like it's like when you go see a movie that you've been, you know, the anticipation's been building, you've been wanting to see it, and it just disappointed you on all levels. That's how I felt watching the Super Bowl yesterday. Yep, pretty disappointing, no doubt about it. And there's just I don't I don't know how else to describe it. It was just so underwhelming. I was in the third quarter in shock that it was still three to three, and I never thought in a million years that it would be only three to three in the third quarter. And then one touchdown makes it ten to three going into the fourth quarter, and that was the most surprising the most the most the biggest like reaction i got out of me was that catch by gronk in the at the one yard line which was an unbelievable catch in like triple coverage look like and other than that i can't tell you any other quote-unquote highlights of that game uh-huh i, I just i have i have no words it just, you it know, just was that bad. i did expect a first quarter what that would be boring maybe a little bit conservative maybe teams that fill each other out a little bit just because the Patriots were are notorious for starting slow in Super Bowls in fact going into yesterday's game they had a total of three points in all of their first quarters under the Belichick and Brady era so they're a team that start, starts very slow offensively in Super Bowls so that was not surprising to me to see them you know, struggle early to score points. They, that was the first time they scored points in the first quarter, wasn't it? If I'm or like they had three only, points yeah, uh, that's before, it. but yeah. I think that was against the Falcons. But that's like down twenty eight to three. That's minuscule for how many times they've been there. Right. So I, I I did expect a little bit of an adjustment period. Plus, you know, I knew that Belichick would game plan for McVay's offense really well. So I thought. You know, the first quarter might be a little tough. Kind of like how the Patriots stifled the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. The Chiefs didn't score in the first half. It took them a half, but then when they figured it out, then they started to get, they got rolling. But mm-hmm. I kind of expected the same way. You know, maybe not uh, going to half with a shutout, but I thought McVay, after a few series, may figure it out. And it really just never happened. It really just never ended up clicking for the Rams at all. It was just a disappointment throughout the entire game from both sides of the ball. And like you said, Jared Goff was like just – he wasn't hit. Like he hold, held on the ball way too long. He was just struggling from first to fourth quarter. 
and he was in in a uh, situation where like this guy should not even be on the football field right now. He should not be quarterback for the team that's in the Super Bowl. Jared Goff had one of the worst quarterback performances I've ever seen in a Super Bowl. One of the worst performances I've ever seen in a big game, like in a playoff type atmosphere. He was not comfortable. He missed open receivers, either with not seeing them or by just missing them on throws. Mm -hmm. All night long, he never got into a rhythm. I think before he threw that interception with four minutes left, he had a couple first down passes where he, it looked like he was getting a little bit into a rhythm. But it was just never then he decided fully that, there. Then he saw Stephon Gilmore wide open. He threw that great pass to him. Yeah, he panicked, and he throws a jump ball to a short receiver not ready for it. Gilmore comes down with it. It was just awful from Goff, start to finish. And, you know, you got to give credit to the Patriots because – Defensively, they did a lot of things that put Goff in uncomfortable situations. They blitzed him a lot. He also had to throw in a zone coverage where he's way less effective throwing into zone coverage than man to man. Patriots are known for a man to man defense. They obviously game plan for the quarterback. They switched it up. I don't know if Goff wasn't expecting it or they just didn't have an answer. Either way, the Rams never adjusted. And one thing about the Super Bowl that makes the Super Bowl different than the other games before, Jeff, is the fact that halftime is like 45 minutes long. And at halftime, it's like playing a, a whole new game. You have that much time at halftime to kind of scrap everything if you want to. Oh, and, yeah. and come up with a new plan, a new adjustment, a new solution to the problem. And I still don't think the Rams did anything different in the second half. They didn't look to me to be a different team offensively in the second half than the first half. They may have moved the ball a little bit better, but not good enough. Not nearly good enough to win a Super Bowl or any yeah. game for that matter. The, the amount of time and effort you put in two weeks into the Super Bowl and you make that kind of performance really questions like how this season was. Obviously, the season was incredibly disappointing because of this. Like... They got nothing done. They, This was like a great season for the Rams, arguably like one of the best teams in the NFL at, at the halfway through the season, and no one would have been shocked to see them in the Super Bowl. And then you see that performance, and it's like a completely different team showed up. Someone stole the Rams' uniforms and played for them, it's looked like. Because that was not the team we saw in the regular season and in the playoffs. That's true. That that Rams team looks stifled. We haven't seen that, like you mentioned. Uh, we also heard going into this game that Todd Gurley was going to be a major part of the game plan. We know that he had been, I don't know, the second fiddle to C.J. Anderson for about a month now due to injury. Mm -hmm. We've heard them say the company line. We've heard Gurley. We've heard McVeigh. We've heard... All these guys say he's not hurt, that he's healthy, that he just didn't play well against the Saints, you know, and things like that. Well, is he, you can't play well if you only get four carries. Is he injured? Oh, it has to be. You is don't he, put the arguably the MVP, like a guy who was in line for an MVP candidacy going into the playoffs, and you don't use him for like your 20 or 30 carries. That you need for a playoff win, you know? Yeah. Giving him, what, four or five carries is absolutely a crime. For that talented of a player, obviously there was something wrong. If, it, if You just don't go from NFL MVP caliber player to IMC Janderson's backup. And exactly. Without, exactly. Without something underneath the surface, right? Yeah, like, there's something up there because if he was completely healthy, he would be – getting the starts he would be getting the cj anderson carries he would be helping them win and maybe even giving them the win because of the fact he's that much of a playmaker he's that much of a difference maker and it clearly showed because when he didn't play they were dead in the water 13 to 3 that's just a funny score to look at in a super bowl like that's 13 to 3 there's regular season games where you're like okay it's a 16 weeks it's a long season i get it they have they some everyone has their off days, but the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl. In a you get season, two weeks of preparation. In a season where the second most points were ever scored 
throughout the season in the league. We have the smallest scoring output in a Super Bowl Only ever. Only one touchdown. That's where I can't get, get, get my mind around. There's one touchdown, not one passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown from the one-guard line, and that's it. I'm in shock. Under 300 yards for both quarterbacks, both had through picks, zero touchdowns. Quarterback ratings were pitiful for a Super Bowl quarterback teams, and – it just seemed like these two were playing. This just didn't feel like a Super Bowl to me. It obviously did not feel, feel like, like a Super Bowl. I also feel like Sean McVay was off his game, not just play calling, but what was up with the conservative approach by the Rams? They didn't go for any of these short fourth downs. They had a fourth and two, fourth and one, fourth and three, midfield plus yardage, and they punted. And I'm mm. like, I, you're I, the Rams. Like I you guys go were, for it yeah. all the time. Yeah, you don't change the way you play. Obviously, Sean McVay. I hate to say it because I think Sean McVay is an amazing coach. He just wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready for the Super Bowl. He wasn't ready to face Belichick. He wasn't ready for the Patriots. He might have been intimidated by the mystique. Have you ever heard the song "Shook Ones" by Mob Deep? No. Check it out sometime. That's that it's, song is playing in my head when I think about. Tell me how the Rams, or is there like cursing in it? We can't say it on air. J- just trust me on this. Okay. It, it's it's also the beginning song to Eight Mile. It's a, the song that oh, it starts. Eight I Mile. might have heard it then, but that song epitomizes to me what the Rams were yesterday. They were shook. They weren't ready. They the were Patriots, almost intimidated, right? The Patriots had been there before, and I didn't think the Patriots played that good of a football game. I thought they were coached very well. I thought Belichick, defensive uh, coach Brian Flores, who's expected to take the Dolphins' head coaching job, I thought they were great. Like I mentioned previously, the Patriots were a team that played man coverage more than any other team this year, and then they go into the game. 90% of the plays yesterday were zoned coverages on blitzes. Or dropping off, but but they were mostly zone coverages. They definitely affected Goff. That game plan stif- stifled. I mean, just literally stifled that offense. But the Rams never adjusted. They weren't ready for that. They did not have a plan B. And that's the thing. The Rams are, like, Coach Pepe is great at adjusting. He was he's he's a great on the spot coach. You know what I mean? Like he's great at picking the plays at that exact moment that like maybe no one's prepared for, but he's like we we got to be uh yeah. got to be unpredictable and he was predictable. The he, problem you, is you compare him with Sean Payton and he will, was just the opposite. That's that's the thing about Sean McVay from here on out is the Rams plan A is phenomenal, but what is their plan B? We don't know. Sean McVay better figure it out because yeah. teams. Does he want to be an Andy Reid like coach? The, Ram, the Rams' offense hasn't been the same since about that Chiefs game. I mean, they've still been good, but you, you know, even against the Saints, their def, their offense wasn't great. I mean, yeah, they were good enough to win the game. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. the Rams' offense has tailed off over the last two months. Where at the beginning of the year, they were possibly the best offense in the NFL, but they just haven't been putting up the same kind of numbers. Now, is it Gurley? Is it his health? Is it Jared Goff being figured out a little bit? I think there's a combination of both because Goff started playing a little bit underwhelming before Gurley got hurt. He really liked how the football felt because he did not want to throw that thing away. Yeah, so I think it's a combination. And, you know, I if I'm a Rams fan, I'm not mad that I lost the Super Bowl to Tom Brady and the Patriots. I am mm-hmm. mad on the way that they lost, and I am upset because I don't know if Jared Goff is my franchise quarterback going forward. I've always doubted that, to be honest with you. And, and it's hard to it's hard to feel that way after going to the Super Bowl. Like it, mm-hmm. to question. But the thing is, how like they... if it was somebody else, like if Breeze would have lost this game, nobody would have been like, "Oh, I don't know if Breeze is a is a franchise quarterback," or you know, like. That doesn't happen, but well, he's proven that he's a franchise quarterback. Right. Goff has not proven that to me yet. He get, they got to the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't on on his shoulders. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it makes you wonder that if the Rams are going to be so reliant on awesome offensive game planning and to mask some of the players that they have, 
it's hard to envision them go, going back to the Super Bowl or, or having that sort of success because, yes, game planning is important. Play calling is important. But at the end of the day, making plays because you're more talented than your opponent is crucial. And that's usually the separation between a decent team to a great team. Yeah. It really is. Like, we make a lot about X's and O's. But it's about the Jimmys and the Joes, man. It really is. Like it, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to who's on your team and who's on my team. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. We can maybe your team is known for not being able to stop the run, so we'll exploit that. But at some point, your team will figure out how to stop the run. Then we're gonna have to do something else, and that's where I feel like the Rams are at now. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to figure out another way to win when Plan A doesn't work. When Plan A doesn't work, because Plan A usually works all the time for them. But when plan A does not work, what does Sean McVay do? What does Jared Goff do? Because we saw it not work yesterday, and they didn't do mm-hmm. anything. They did not adjust. And I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Sean McVay. He's still a young coach. He still has tons of potential. But he's leaning – to me, he might be leaning towards more an Andy Reid, a guy that's a great coach but can't get it done than a Belichick-era coach that people thought he could be. This is a bad situation for him, in all honesty. That's a little unfair, though, because he's so young, right? Yeah, oh, no, no. That's why I'm saying I'm giving him the benefit of like the, the length of his career. But there is a lot of questions. Plus, I thought Andy Reid coached really well against Belichick in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, but there has been some time where he is very questionable in his play calling. But just, we'll, we'll, we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, and, it's true. But that was it's just I, – I felt a lot of Andy Reid like as questionable decisions that, you know, like he's conservative. And Sean, and Sean McVay just got way too conservative for that moment. And how I explain – how I see this is you got to maybe look at Jared Goff as like if you can – if he can't get it done, if he can't help you do those fast pace like they were doing well. Like you said, that two-minute offense-esque type of formation, they were doing really well. But Jared Goff threw that pick. Maybe – just maybe they should be looking for a quarterback on the side. Maybe now that would be controversial. Yes, but do you think maybe it's been a couple of years now? Do you think it's maybe time for like a fifth or sixth round well, pick I to mean, be Goff used? Well, I mean, is still a very young quarterback. I'm not. Yes, but is it? But is it safe to have like a fifth or sixth round pick for a quarterback? Oh, I don't doubt that at all. But but drafting this quarterback with the fifth or sixth round is completely different than going to find a different find another quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're saying, "Hey, let's use one of our ten draft picks on a quarterback," and it happens to be one of our last picks, that's normal. Mm-hmm. But if if you're insinuating going to get a Nick Foles or like a first round second round draft pick that will be controversial not that you're wrong not that not that that wouldn't be the right approach i'm just saying like you're you're blatantly more, stating mm-hmm. jared goff is not yeah. our future quarterback but yeah i understand what you're saying it might make him angry but it's all on him when it comes down to it when it's all said and done because they if they were in that position it's because of something you did i mean he ultimately was a pro bowl quarterback you know but wasn't he an alternate I think Jared Goff made the Pro Bowl. He obviously didn't play because, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he made it over Dak Prescott and and Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's just one of those things in where Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> it's, but to me, do I want a Pro Bowl quarterback or a playoff as quarterback? You know what I mean? Right. No, I'm not disagreeing with you, but you have to be honest. Like you have mm-hmm. to admit. Like just, Jared, Jared Goff went. Jared Goff quarterback a team that won against the Saints last week or two weeks ago. True. Now we can say it's controversial all we want, but the point is that they went into a very tough environment and won a football game that many people didn't think they were going to win. Oh yeah. And did he have the greatest game ever? No, but he was good enough. Like he was, he, he was decent. He, he was managing the game. You yeah, can say. I agreed. And, but, for me, a quarterback can only manage the game in the Super Bowl if his everyone else is elite, and no one was being elite in that Super Bowl. Goff was obviously shook, and I think the one play that showed that he was shook exactly who you're thinking about. was the false start. Yeah, absolutely. When you're a quarterback and you commit a false start, your head is not where it needs to be. Like, you're either – you're you're a little shell-shocked. Like, your focus oh, yeah. is on you're, – you're probably thinking, like, I got to make my read so much faster you forget to do the little things, right? And then it makes you make mistakes. Oh, yeah. And that false start, I've never actually seen a false start where it goes on the quarterback like that. 
Like that's pretty that, rare. I've seen it before, but that it's was something that happens one every I don't know forty, fifty football games. Like I, it's it's a very rare occurrence, and not in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't. Remember you know what I mean? It happening in the Super I Bowl. I don't think that's ever happened in the Super Bowl, and that's just that just shows to me that he wasn't ready. Yeah, I hate to say it, but uh-huh. it, to me, he was not ready. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty clear. What do you say we go to a break? Sure, we can go to a break, and maybe. Uh, Maybe maybe God can listen to this and think about investing. Because when investing and planning for your retirement, it's always best to get advice from the experts. Best-selling author Harry Dent, America's number one economist, says the dark window is open. There's an opportunity to rapidly boost your retirement savings before the greatest stock market crash in American history. But this dark window won't be open for long. You can make up to 10 times the annual average stock market gain in just a few short months. Find out more by going to www.harrydentforecast.com. There is a very short time to take advantage of this dark window opportunity. So once again, to take advantage, go to www.harrydentforecast.com to learn more. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We're finishing up talking about the Super Bowl and the aftermath. We talked about how the Rams felt on the other side, especially offensive tackle Whitmore or Whitemore saying, uh, "At the end of the day, we're all going to die." In his interview after the game, which is one of the most depressing things I've ever heard someone ever be interviewed. Like this bummed me out. Super stoic, man. Yeah, it was so, like it's just. It was just sad. I was like, I'm worried about the guy. I'm like, dude, do you need a hug or something? I mean, come on. But uh, anyways, now let's talk about the Patriots side because they had their record six Super Bowl. They're tied with the Steelers for the most Super Bowls in NFL history with six, like I said. Brady is the only NFL player in history with six Super Bowls. He he was tied with five with Charles Haley, who won, I believe, two with the Niners and three with the the, uh, Cowboys, if I'm not mistaken. Uh And... Now we got to think about is now we got to think about the uh, the aftermath of this. We know Brady says he's not retiring. We don't know about Belichick's future. We don't know about Gronk's future. Do you see this? If Belichick doesn't return, I don't see. I can see him returning. But if one, if he just says, you know what, I've had it. I'm done. I've had my rings. I can call it a career. Is this team not the same? But still, if they still have Tom Brady, but not Belichick, is this team still a contender? No. So, are, who do you value more? That, that's a better question. Belichick or Brady? Uh, well, the quarterback's definitely important. I mean, you can't. Mm-hmm. I don't think Belichick could win a Super Bowl with anyone else. I mean, not so anyone else. So, they both need each most, other to win. Is, yeah, they yeah. both need mm-hmm. each other. But if Belichick is not in the equation and it's Josh McDaniels as head coach, I think ma- many people speculate will be the next head coach of the Patriots. I, I think it's almost a foregone I feel like that's right? such a huge drop-off. I'm sorry. I just don't see that even being close. Like, mm-hmm. I, it, it, to me, it's Nothing like... Nothing against Josh McDaniels, but just the fact that how Belichick has been arguably the greatest head coach of all time. Yeah, and now the Patriots are losing Brian Flores, who's their defensive play caller. Like, man. It, and they, yeah... 
That would be a big a big transition to make. Now I'm not saying they can't. I maybe I should go back. And he's back a great say, defensive coordinator, like no doubt about it. Because of the fact they only let out at three points, like that's a good play on him too. Yeah. Not just how the Rams play, but that's how good the that's how good the defensive coordinating was. Maybe I should go back and say, yeah, they could be a contender because they have Tom Brady. But I just think that that team is so much more vulnerable. Like I, oh, I feel like they're more average than elite at that point. Mm-hmm. Because let's yeah. be honest, the Patriots are a good football team, but like they rely on a lot of Absolutely. small things. Like they rely on a lot of key. Uh, they re- rely on role players making key plays a lot, and I, I obviously they were the best team this year, but it was a close gap, and it mm-hmm. wasn't like they were a runaway team or anything like that. So, Tom Brady entering forty two years old next year. If you don't have Belichick, who's arguably the greatest coach of all time. And you have Josh McDaniels who let's be honest at this point is a, has been a uh, failure as a head coach. Right. I mean, we'd have to say that like he, he didn't do well with the Broncos. Yeah. Um, he, he has, he's still very young. He could be a great head coach in this league, but God, it just seems like it'd be such a difference. And I just don't know if McDaniels could like, adjust or game plan like Belichick could. And, I, and and you know what? That's the best thing about the Patriots. The best thing about the Patriots is not their quarterback. The best thing is not their running back. The best thing is not their defense. It's their coaching. Absolutely. Like their coaching agree. is their – that's the one area where they just dominate against their opposition. Just dominate. And it doesn't matter if you're Andy Reid or Sean McVay or insert – Insert Miami Dolphins, New York Jets, or Buffalo Bills coach here for the last 17 years. Mm-hmm. You're just going to get out coached nine times out of ten yeah. by Bill Belichick. So what you're saying is, well, I agree with you. I think this is maybe an obvious statement, but coaching is the most valuable thing out of everything else. Uh, yeah, especially for this team. You know, for this team, mm-hmm. absolutely. And do you, did you? There was actually an article I was going around based off how when Belichick first got hired in two thousand or nineteen ninety nine, whenever it was, right. that a guy in the Atlanta article said that New England Patriots will regret Belichick for years to come. Yep, I, I saw that. It was in the like the Boston Herald, right? It yeah, was like or something in, like that. It was a local newspaper for for New England. Yeah. So, uh, wow, you how wrong could someone be? I wonder who wrote that, and if he's, uh, uh, if he's still around. <laughs> Yeah, but, I'm not, but, not like but a liar time, dead. Like but at the, the time, Bill Belichick was a retread. Oh yeah, I agree. He was, I think, like 43. But the it, thing- it was his record was like 37 and 44 as a head coach when he got hired mm-hmm. to the Patriots. But, like he had coached four or five mm-hmm. seasons and was had a losing record. So I mean, it yes. kind of is what it is, you know. But to me, this is why I see so many other head coaches getting another op- more opportunities elsewhere. Because of the fact of Bill Belichick. Because he got another chance in New England and made the most of it. That's why I think there's so many other head coaches who should never get another opportunity to coach again that are getting opportunities to coach again. Yep. And rightfully so. Like, maybe they're in the wrong front office, wrong here and there. Like, sometimes it's just about scenery. And, like, that's why I'm okay with these other opportunities because we got to see what else they can do elsewhere. And he reads a perfect example. Like, the Chiefs are being contender every single year. Uh-huh. And, like, everyone's like, oh, he's on the downhill slump after leaving the Eagles. He can't get win the big one. But he's getting he's been closer and closer to winning the big one than ever now. That's true. So it's all about who the opportunities you're giving are to. It's, it's, just, it's just one of those things in where I think it's right to give other coaches chance, multiple chances. But, again, there's also an X number of chances you, you should be able to give them. Right, but right. again, this this game begin every sport begins and ends with the head coach, and with coaching in general. And if you don't have a good coaching, i.e., the Browns back when Hugh Jackson was a coach, you're dead in the water. Absolutely, you you can't win. With, you can't win with bad coaching in the NFL. I think that's yeah. obvious. But yeah. I think coaching means more in this sport than in most, especially in like. If you compare it to basketball, mm-hmm. I feel like coaching is like so low on the totem pole yeah. in terms of important factors of winning. Mm-hmm. I could be the head coach of the Golden State Warriors and nothing would have change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Belichick, uh, I, I would say that that game last night that he coached was one of the best games that he's ever coached because I, I don't know. I don't think... 
I don't think just anybody could coach that team and have won the Super Bowl this year. Probably not too many. Maybe not oh, yeah. ever. Yeah, maybe not anyone. Because this showed because this was not as talented as a Patriots team as he has in the past. You can even argue the fact that he his team last year was better than this team. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Uh, for them, though, Gronk. Um, I expect Gronk to retire. Are you on that? Yeah, I, I, I think he's he's just too banged up. He had that really big catch in the game. Maybe the most important play of the game, honestly. Yeah. That was a great catch, I mean, too. Other than, like, other than the interception, open. other than Gilmore's interception, it might have been the most important Okay, let's game. be honest. One, uh, one of us could have flown to Atlanta, went onto the field, and picked that ball off as soon as when he threw that ball. Like, come on. That was one of the easiest interceptions I think I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm not taking anything from Gilmore. He still got the ball. It was like a punt. Yeah, it yeah, was. But it was, mean, he he threw, threw, right yeah, he threw it right. And it was right to him. It wasn't even near uh, Cooks. He didn't even throw it in Cooks. Like, Cooks wasn't even looking at the time. So it was like it was just too easy. I'm actually a little surprised he didn't drop the interception because it was so easy. Usually they drop those when it's oh, like. Oh, because they're like, it's too good to be true? Yeah, like they, they were waiting for the ball uh, to come down for so long. How many that, times like, have we seen that in the past? They drop it because like they – are so excited. They, they think yeah. about running the ball all, all the way it's home. It's like you want it like the bang bang to happen, so you don't even think about it. But when you overthink it, you can like mess. Oh, one hundred percent. But he, but Stephon Gilmore is a, one of the best cornerbacks in the league, in my opinion. He's easily up there, and he's I would trust him with that over most people. To be honest with you, Gilmore, does, Gilmore doesn't need a lot of love, but I I give him a lot of love. I was a little surprised, and I know it didn't matter. I thought the Patriots were going to go for it on that fourth down. and win the I game. thought so as well. Not saying it would have been. Uh, honestly, in that situation, either call would have been fine. Kicking the field goal or going for it, in you my know, opinion, would have been the I, like I, fine call. But you know what? Kicking the field goal, 10-point game, it would have been. That, that was the right call in Yeah, in no, retrospect. I mean, if you, it, it just goes to you got to do the math in your head. And in your head, you got to say this. What is more likely to happen? I sneak the ball and get the first down, or I kick the field goal and it goes in. And they're both yeah. probably at about that almost 90%. that almost missed too. They're both at really about close. probably like a ninety percent though. Like they're both yeah. really high at odds. And with that, I was a little. Cons- I would have been understandable if they went for it because Grukowski did miss that first field goal of the day because Romo jinxed him in a very hilarious. Toy- we gotta talk about Tony Romo a little bit. How great he was because. I love the fact Jim Nance was saying he everyone's thirty one of thirty one. The last field goals they've never missed in Mercedes Benz Stadium. And then Tony Romo, as everyone else said in in their home, so was, you just jinx him, didn't you? Because that is a classic jinx, the commentator jinx. And he goes, I hope I don't think so. I think it's 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 all, that's just how that's just the stats. And then and then he misses it pretty badly too. It wasn't really that close. And Tony Romo just starts laughing. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was amazing. And then uh. You know, we were talking about Zerline being one of the best kickers in the NFL. That last kick at the end of the game, that was really pathetic, if you ask me. Like, he didn't even try, did he? It looked like he barely cared. Uh-huh. Pretty pretty bad. And But I love Tony Romo. It was great. I thought he should be uh, – every time I watch a game, I hope he's commentating. So that's just how I feel at the moment about him. So I think he was great. Jim Nance was great. Um a lot of people say pick him over Joe Buck and Troy Aikman any day of the week. I would happen to agree. Would uh-huh. you? Would you? Would you rather have Tony Romo and Jim Nance, or would you rather have Joe Buck and Troy Aikman? Uh, Romo for sure. Yeah, and Nance is not even. And I don't even care about Jim Nance. Uh, Romo's just that good. Yeah, Romo's anybody. extremely talented. And then, but the thing is, when they're on the line and they're 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 about to do audibles and stuff, he keeps saying like stuff that you don't think about they're like oh he's got a point maybe they should do this kind of thing or this kind of thing he's a very intelligent guy and i think he has a great career ahead of him when it comes to just being a commentator and um he's found his true calling in my opinion but Uh overall this game was an incredible disappointment and like you said that gronk catch was the highlight of the game in that triple coverage area that missed uh touchdown in the end zone by golf was very it was a Aaron Donald's reaction to that was everyone else's reaction, in my opinion, uh-huh. because it was like, "Are you kidding me?" And uh, but other than that, there was just a lot of disappointment in this Super Bowl, and arguably the worst Super Bowl in NFL history. It's got to be up there. Like, I mean, Super Bowl Fifty was pretty bad. Forty Eight was pretty bad with the Seattle Seahawks destroying the Broncos. Um, I can't. Th- is there any other bad ones you can remember? The Ravens Giants. 
oh two thousand Super Bowl thirty five, where the Ravens just destroyed the Giants. You know who the quarterback was for the Giants? Kerry Collins. Yes, it was. <laughs> Kerry <laughs> Collins was a quarterback. It was Troy. Okay, let's just hold on. Hold on one second. Oh, not Troy Aikman. Trent Dilfer. It was Trent Dilfer versus Kerry Collins in a Super Bowl. Let's let that one sink in real quick. Yup. That's got to be the weirdest matchup what about in quarterback. Manning versus Rex Grossman. Oh my God, that actually happened. Super Bowl Forty One. I completely forgot about that. No, okay. No one remembers Rex Grossman. They remember that defense. They remember Devin Hester. That's who they yeah. remember the bear, from the Bears. And the first, the Brian opening Erlacher. kick, yeah, Brian Earl, and the opening kick up being run back for a touchdown by Hester, who arguably is the greatest uh, punt return man, the return man of all time. Do you think he'd be a Hall of Fame just based off him, just his record? Uh, it's close. I, it, I'd have to think about it. Yeah, it is close. But, anyways, um, this, yeah, Rex Grossman versus Payne Manning was pretty bad. Uh, pfft. I can't think of anything else. Then, then they like we just said, Trent Dilfer versus Kerry Collins. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anyone else. That's that, that I, we out of a matchup as those two. Even Rich Gannon versus Brad Johnson wasn't. The oh most my exciting god! I completely. For, well, Rich Gannon was the MVP, so that's granted. But yeah. Brad Johnson. <laughs> Brad Johnson's terrible. I'm sorry, people. He's whoever is a fan of Brad Johnson. I'm sorry. He. Probably one of the worst quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl because that defense was so baller. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Anyways, we should go to a break. We come sure. back. We'll continue our talk about the Super Bowl. In fact, we'll talk about the halftime show. We'll talk about other stuff that happened yesterday and the future of both teams, plus who the favorite is to win next year's Super Bowl at this moment in time. But before, I want to talk to you about investing and planning for your retirement. And when you do that, it's always best to get the advice from the experts. Best-selling author Harry Dent, America's number one economist, says, The dark window is open. There's an opportunity to rapidly boost your retirement savings before the greatest stock market crash in American history. But this dark window won't be open for long. You can make 10 times the annual stock market gain in just a few short months. According to the research of renowned Harvard economist Harry Dent, though, this window could slam shut later this year, and nobody on Wall Street is expecting it. This dark window is something bigger by far than anything he's predicted up to this point, and you can make 10 times the annual average stock market gain. Find out more by going to www.harrydentforecast.com. There's a very short time to take advantage of this dark window, so go to www.harrydentforecast.com to learn more. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Just finishing up Super Bowl talk, but I never thought I'd have to say this in a football podcast, but let's talk about Maroon 5. All right. Um, the lot of, there was a lot of, uh, well, not praise, but criticisms on on Twitter by multiple celebrities, and like LeBron James is one of them especially, of how not good it was. Can't really explain it other than that. The uh, halftime show, I thought, was meh. Meh. So I made the... Well, I saw SpongeBob, and I watched that part, and I was all into that part. 
as soon as they let SpongeBob go, I uh, I went and played Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, yeah, I love that game. It's actually really fun. So yeah, that's what I was doing. Now watching this, but apparently a lot of people did not like it. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where when you book Maroon Five, and nothing gets them, but you're going to limit what the Super Bowl halftime show can actually be. It's it's mm-hmm. going to be limiting it. Yeah, because you know what they're known for. You know the songs that they're known for, that the style of music that they're known for, and you know I did like Travis Scott and Big Boy being part of it. I thought their parts should have been longer. I thought they should have been incorporated more. But ultimately, we saw the mishmash of songs by Maroon 5. Some of them really didn't segue well with each other. And, yeah, it's just a, I don't know. It's You don't think of Maroon 5 and think, man, that's going to be a fun party or that's going to be a fun show. Don't tell that to my parents. Oh, yeah? They're fans of them. Well, my mom is. Right, but I mean, it's not like an exciting band, right? Like, No, no like fireworks, you mean, stuff, the kind of stuff like now, that? No, the fireworks stuff was sick. Speaking of which, did you see yeah. that? On uh, top I, of the I, stadium, yeah. that was... That stadium's gorgeous, by the way. I, was, I would say that was easily... I forgot about that. That was the most exciting part, was the images of the stadium outside with the fireworks going off around it. That was cool. I, I love that stadium. It, I love the outdoor-esque kind of, like, the open dome thing. I love that, so I thought that was cool. But uh, it was just a great... That was a great experience as well. But overall... Like you said, there was a lot to be desired from what I've read by uh, multiple people. And it was just... It reminded me of when they had Coldplay. Like, Coldplay wasn't bad at all, but, like, Coldplay is Coldplay. Like, they're not Prince. They're not Michael Jackson. They're not Bruno Mars. Like, So you are wanting uh, more of a... Well, those are more shows, right? Like, there's dancing involved. There's, like, more action, more upbeat where mm. maroon five like she will be loved is a good song but is that something you want to see at a super bowl halftime show you know no like it's not i would rather have like uh someone playing uh or like uh metallica playing something or something like that you know right right i know that's so old school but i would love to see like a rock band just do it a pump up song like that i think next year we'll see something different for sure but uh, yeah maroon five was really safe like a really who's, who's, that, who's that Cash Me Outside girl? She's like a rapper now, isn't she? Oh, God. Let's, let's have her come in and see what happens. No, please, God. She'll probably fight people. Allegedly. Please, God, don't let this happen. It's not going to happen. No way. She's 15, you know. Isn't that weird? She's like a very... She's one of the most popular rappers in the world. In, or maybe the country. I'm not sure. I'm not to the extent of my knowledge. But she's... <laughs> She's fifteen. Yeah, she's a, she's a burner. And, yeah, yeah. Do you see? There was a tw- there was a Snapchat question about her, and a lot of guys were saying, "Date me." It was the creepiest. Well, they were all, I think, her age. Hopefully, I'm hoping to God. Uh, so, what about the commercials? I thought those were kind of underwhelming too. There were a couple that were good. I can't think of them on the top of my head. Yeah, I'm trying to. Remember. There, not, there wasn't one commercial that really stood out to me. The Super Bowl 100 commercial, I thought, was pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited for the 100th anniversary. I'm hoping they're going to do like the throwback jerseys like they did in the 75th anniversary in 94. Yeah. Like you were you were alive then, so you remember it. I remember that season. You were what, 9? Well. You were 9. Cuz you're 10 years older than me. I remember it quite well. You do. And did you like the jerseys back then, the throwbacks they had? Yeah, for the most part. From which ones? I guess some you didn't really like. I don't really care for the Lions throwback uniforms, to be honest with you. The, the blue and grays, like, they're okay. You mean the just the, the no logos on the helmets yeah. and stuff like that? that? That's like the Thanksgiving tradition type of thing, though. That's not really, like, a, anything big. My, my opinion, at least. The but Steelers throwbacks are not that great. Were those, were those uh, the weird... The, they're weird, right? Yeah. yeah they, um, the, I know the Bears had a weird one as well. Like, they had the stri- stripes, like, the old school years. Um, the Packers, I think, had, like, weird... Gr- yeah, they had yellow helmets, didn't they? Like, just without the logo, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure. There was a lot of good ones, though. 
Um, I, I hope they do something good. Is all I'm asking. So we talked about Gronk. Do you think that we'll see here in the next few days a report that Gurley played with like a torn ligament or something like that for the last month or so of the season? I, I there has to be right. You would think so. Like there's no ex, there's, there's no excuse for him not playing as much as he should have. If he was healthy, if he was healthy, if he wasn't healthy, that'd be. A, I would, I would be extremely upset if I heard he. If I'm a Rams fan, I heard he was healthy and they didn't. They didn't give him at least 15 to 20, 25 carries. Uh huh. Because he was MVP caliber player in the regular season, so why not use him to the full extent of everything you can yeah, possibly do? Up, man. Yeah. Something has to be up, right? It's the easiest play in the book when someone's playing that well. You ride him until he can no longer be ridden. And obviously, he couldn't be ridden. So looking ahead to next year, mm-hmm. the Kansas City Chiefs are the current favorite to win the Super Bowl at 6-1. to one. Mm, Makes sense. Do you agree with that so yeah. far? You think they have... Mahomes, Mahomes, I, I don't see him losing a, uh, his... The, you know his his spectacular play. You know, it's, he's just that good of a player. I think he's going to be good for years to come. I don't. This you don't throw fifty touchdown passes in a fluke year. Personally, that's you know my, it'll be an interesting off season. But I'd be interested in seeing what the odds are for the Colts because they have a good team. Plus, they have a lot of cap space. They can make a big splash. So do you? Okay, so. Hear me out. If they get some good quality players in the cap in the market, do you see an AFC Championship game between the Colts and the Chiefs? I would say right now, looking at next year, I would say that the three teams that are most likely to go to the Super Bowl as of today from the AFC mm-hmm. is is the Chiefs, the Patriots, and the Colts. Honestly, shocker that the Patriots are your on your list. Right, because because you'd expect them to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Everyone this year, apparently. The NFC, I'm not so sure. The Rams have some questions answered big but time. There is still a lot of. I think there's a lot of teams also that like can come back from obscurity and be a potential contender. The Vikings could have a bounce back season. Mm-hmm. And you got to look at the teams that have high cap space as well. That's in the NFC as well. So there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of different options there. Uh, so we did hear some news that the Oakland Raiders have reached an agreement with the San Francisco Giants to play at their stadium, it's, it Oracle ha- it's Park. No, it's actually nothing's been official yet. It's reported. Right. Well, it sounds like they've reached an agreement to play at Oracle Park. Mm-hmm. In San Francisco, not in Levi Stadium, where the 49ers play in Santa Clara. What are your thoughts about that? Playing a very smaller in a smaller stadium than they originally were playing in. Quite a bit smaller. Yeah, the Coliseum holds like sixty five thousand. I think San Francisco holds like forty one thousand. Well, the, it's the thing it's is a baseball the, field. The, the the Giants uh, field isn't about like attendance figures. It's just about the like how it looks it's just like a ni- it's just a nice I- environment to play in and next to the next to the cove and all that good stuff but yes i don't think it's fit for a football team to play in with the giants also playing there i just don't think this is going to work out but if it if they do play there i don't see it being anything spectacular you know what i mean i just see it as just like it's a, it's almost like ruining the field for the baseball Rather than the other way around. Yeah. Does that make it, sense? Yeah, it does. Um, I honestly don't know why they'd want to play there and not play in Santa Clara. I mean, other than pride reasons. I think it's just a classic Niners Raiders rivalry. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, so, like you mentioned, nothing's official yet. And part of the reason why nothing is official is because the 49ers would actually have to waive their territorial rights to allow the Raiders to and play And the NFL Francisco. also needs to approve of it as well. You have to add that to it. So, so they, they would two, have to they allow it. To it. They need two people to – they need two different areas to approve of this. And that's asking a lot. Right. All things considered. So 
we won't know if it'll happen. I, I don't know when this decision will get made, but yeah, according to reports, Fortnite have not allowed that yet, and I'm assuming they won't. Yeah. To, uh, I do think, however, though, that the Raiders will end up playing in Santa Clara at Levi Stadium this year because I think the NFL will ultimately, if the Raiders do not play in Oakland, which I still think they might. I think the NFL will make them play in Santa Clara, even if the 49ers and the Raiders don't like it. It's kind of like when you have like a sibling and your parents tell you that you have to share something and you share, both, share. It's basically sharing a room. Yeah. And you both are like, I don't want to share. I want it to myself and the NFL. The you parent here is like, no, you're going to do this. So you no. don't think they'll make them go, Hey, you're playing at StubHub center with the chargers. I think it's highly more likely that they play in the Bay Area at Levi's than than moving to Los Angeles for a year. I'm just yeah, I'm just saying we'll they, they might they might be so at odds they have to go. Okay, well you got to go to L.A. now type of thing. Yeah. I can see that happening. Anyways, uh, that is our show for today. We are all Ugh. done. We'll be back tomorrow with more fallout of the Super Bowl. We'll uh, discuss details in a little bit more detail and uh, talk about the upcoming off season, what to expect as we turn the page on the 2018, 2019 the, NFL the season, season may be over, but the off season is just beginning. And that's just as entertaining to me as the regular season. And as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff. That's Mark Souza. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program